here today to give you a brief intro to RxJS, which is um, Reactive Extensions for JavaScript. It's a framework. Um, before we talk about specifically RxJS, I wanted to first um, talk a little bit about reactive programming. Um, then I'll talk a little bit about the Reactive Extensions framework in general and then specifically give some examples about uh, RxJS, which is reactive extension specifically for JavaScript. Uh, so what is reactive programming? Uh, reactive programming is a concept or paradigm where uh, you can turn almost anything into asynchronous data streams. This isn't really a new idea. Uh, we deal with this pretty much every day, especially with JavaScript. We have click listeners. Um, where basically you have a listener on, say, a button, and when that button is pressed, the listener does something with that event. We also have HTTP requests. A request is made, data is then sent back to a callback function, and that callback function does something with the data. Um, so this pattern that we see pretty much every day with asynchronous data streams is called the observer pattern. Um, you basically have an observable or emitter that is emitting events and um, an observer that is watching that emitter or listening uh, for those events. Uh, so that's a little bit about what reactive programming is. Um, reactive extensions is basically reactive programming um, on steroids. Um, it's a framework that has entity entities that allow you to implement the observer pattern on almost anything. There are four main parts to the Reactive Extensions framework. There are the observables, which I've already talked about. These are the emitters. Um, they are emitting data or events. The observers, which are the listeners. They're observing the observables. There are also operators. Operators are functions on the observable class um, that basically uh, manipulate the data that's coming from the observable before it gets to the observer. And subscriptions. Subscriptions are created when, a, when an observer begins to observe or subscribes to an observable. And subscriptions basically represent the relationship between observables and observers. Um, in this picture, Iron Man is ironing. He is the observable because he's admitting events. And the shirt is the observer because it's taking in the events and changing based on that event. Um, so we've talked about reactive um, programming, reactive extensions. Uh, reactive extensions was a framework that was uh, originally created by Microsoft for .NET, um, but it has since become open source and um, has been used now in different languages. Uh, for example, you have RxJava. Um, for our purposes, we have RxJS. Um, I think the best way to explain RxJS and how it can be useful for us with JavaScript is uh, taking the observables and comparing them to promises. Um, just like reactive extensions is reactive programming on steroids, uh, you can say that uh, RxJS is like promises on, st on steroids. Um, some might even say that promises are, or observables are better than promises. Why? Um, promises have a few shortcomings. First of all, they resolve immediately, no matter what. Um, they also only run once. So once they run and they resolve to a value, that value is what you'll always get. And you can't unsubscribe for them. You basically can't cancel. They're gonna, like we said, we're, they're gonna resolve immediately and they resolve no matter what. You can't stop them if there's a need to stop them. Unlike promises, observables uh, will only run when something subscribes to it. It's only going to run when it has an observer subscribe to it and saying, please give me your data when you have data. They can run multiple times, so they can send changing data and give you access to data that might be changing. And you can unsubscribe from them. Um, say uh, someone makes a call to an HTTP request, but then they navigate away from the page. You can actually stop that request so it doesn't resolve and you uh, can better manage your resources. 
Um, I think the best way to show the difference between observables and promises is to show an example, which is what I have here. Uh, so basically at the top here, what I have commented out is uh, a promise. It's set, there's a set timeout, and then within one second, in one second, it's going to resolve to the value of um, 42. Promises started, timeout hit, 42. Likewise, um, here I've created an observable. I fed it an observer, set timeout as well. On the observer, I call on next with 42, and in a second, it should console log 42. So you're probably thinking that this is pretty similar to what a promise is, and you're right, except if we bring back in the promise, but we don't dot then off of it, and instead of, subs and we, um, instead of subscribing here, I'm also going to take away this subscription. Um, what we see here is the promise started, the timeout was hit. Although we didn't log anything, it's still resolved. Un, uh, unlike the observable, which didn't run at all. So this is an example of how uh, it won't run unless something subscribes to it. Likewise, um, because observables kind of contain everything that, needs, that they need to be created and also torn down, um, if I bring back in Basically, I have the, the observable here. Um, the way that it works is if you have then a second function that returns, this will then be the dot dispose function when you call dot dispose. Um, and basically what I'm doing here is in half a second, I'm setting a timeout of a half a second on the subscription, which is the right here, I'm calling dot dispose. So this is going to actually clear the timeout before the timeout actually has a chance to run in one second. Uh, let me get rid of this, sorry. So as you can see, um, in half a second, I was actually able to cancel the observable before it was able to run. So as you can see, th in this uh, scenario, uh, when you're able to cancel an observable or unsubscribe from it um, or just not run it when it's not subscribed to, you can have a um, better control over your and management of your resources. Um, really quickly before I wrap up here because I'm running out of time, there's a few other examples of how you can use RxJS. Um, not only is it useful in the back end but also in the front end. Uh, you can use it with them um, with DOM events. Uh, for example, if in animation you have three objects and object uh, B's position is dependent on object A's and object C's is dependent on object B's, you can actually chain observables and just listen to or observe object A's position and then all of the positions uh, after that object B's and object C's will then um, update. Um, based on just listening to object A's. And finally, uh, using it with scope. Here basically this, uh, this um, snippet of code is uh, allowing someone to type a search, into, search query into a search box. And as they're typing, it's taking the string, the value, and looking, searching Wikipedia for that value and giving them a live update of, that, of their search query as they type. Um, dot throttle, map, distinct until change, flat map, latest, all of these are operators that come with RxJS. Um, if you did not have this written with RxJS, you would uh, most likely have to write out the functionality of each one of these functions in JavaScript. So you can imagine how lengthy this piece of code would get um, when you can just write it in 10 lines right here. Uh, so that's just a really brief intro of RxJS uh, to leave you today with the final takeaway. Um, just to wrap things up, Rx is a really great um, framework because it gives you an, an abstraction that allows you to reason about the problems you're solving without um, having to worry about the minute details that make the relationships work. Um, so I encourage you all to check it out. 
like promises, it's a, sh it's a steep learning curve, but I think once you get the hang of it, you'll really be pleased with um, the functionality. Thanks so much, and uh, have a great day.